Hey guys, Red the Nerd here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers 40 year anniversary laser beak Funko Pop. Now, as you guys know, I am a huge Transformers fan. And not just that, my favorite character from Transformers is Soundwave. Everywhere you look in this room that I'm sitting in right now, you will see a Soundwave figure somewhere perched up on a shelf. It's it's like it's like cockroaches. He's everywhere. Like you can't get rid of him. No matter how many times you use raid or how many times my parents try to get me to sell my figures, they always come back for some reason. They're unkillable. It's 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 insane. And since Soundwave is my favorite, you know, Transformers character, one of my favorite minions that he has is Laserbeak and I was so incredibly psyched to, when I when Funko announced that they were doing um, they were making a Laserbeak Funko Pop for the 40-year anniversary of Transformers, which is fantastic. Um, so these are new figures. Uh, we did have uh, Transformer Funko Pops in the past. We had, obviously, I have Soundwave and Megatron, and there was also Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and all that. But for this line right here, it's kind of like a sub-line. It, apparently, with Transformers, there's always some sort of line that also is a sub-line. It's, it's weird. I don't know what it is about Transformer merchandise, but they're always... It's a line within a line, as I always say. Flip around to the back, and you can see the new uh, characters here. You got Astro Train. Looks really cool. Uh, Blaster, which is basically just an Autobot version of Soundwave, which he's pretty lame. Um, I mean, because Soundwave literally roasted the guy. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. You poor excuse for a sound system. All talk, no shock. So... He doesn't really matter to me all that much. Then you also got a new and improved um, uh, Optimus Prime there with a new Megatron with his Fusion Cannon. Actually, I much prefer the older Megatron than the uh, the newer one. I've seen the newer one in person, and I just don't really like it that, that much. But today, we're going to be focusing on this little guy right here, which is Laserbeak. So let's take a look at the actual figure. So here is Laserbeak. Now, if you guys remember my um, uh, Funko Pop Soundwave review, which I did a long time ago, um, I was really, really complimenting uh, Funko for making it really, really toy accurate because I actually have the original, well, not the original, it's kind of like a re-release of the original uh, Soundwave figure that came out in the 80s. And comparing the two, I also did that in the review if you really are curious to see how accurate the fi uh, the Funko compared to the actual figure is. It's extremely accurate from, from the detail, from the sticker placement to the hole in the back of his head like he got shot. This is the new weapon you ordered. <laughs> It was, it's, it's amazing. It, everything about that was so incredibly toy accurate. Um, these, the, a little fun fact, these Transformer Funko Pops aren't actually, you know, technically accurate to the how they look in G1, other than it does do a good look at a uh, job of looking like G1, the G1 characters. Uh, it's mostly, um, it's mostly accurate to the toys because the, these Transformer figures are actually under the subline of the retro toys line that Funko has been doing lately, um, which includes Transformer figures. There's a Rubik's Cube one, uh, but obviously the Transformer ones are just absolutely amazing. Um, and you can see just incredibly how awesome and detailed this guy looks, even though that he is pretty simple. Um, and it, it, it works for his design. I just love the G1 Laserbeak design from how he transforms into a relatively slim and uh, cassette tape. And then he transforms into this bird there, which is just fantastic. Um, and I actually do have, technically this is Buzzsaw, but they're basically the exact same mold and they're not really the same character, but nobody really cares about Buzzsaw because he's just kind of a one note character. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, use Buzzsaw here because I don't actually have a Laser BG1 toy. This one came with the re-release Soundwave from Walmart. So I'm gonna show you how, you know, accurate, they're basically the same thing. So 
Uh, as you can clearly see from the head sculpts there, the head sculpts are basically spot on. Just a little difference that the, 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 obviously the head couldn't be as long as the G1 toy here, mostly because the Funko Pop has really big heads. Um, and I'm not really a big fan of the giant head here. I know that Fun a lot of people that criticize Funko don't really like the big heads, but sometimes the Funko Pops, um, with, uh, with relatively, you know, some Funko Pops with the big heads don't really look all that bad. It's just for some reason with the Transformer figures, especially Soundwave, even though that I really do like that uh, that Funko Pop, just everything going on with the head is just way too big for me, and I don't know what it is. Um, but it, at least that it is, you know, toy accurate, so we got the good look at that. Um, the only thing is, is that his eye is a little bit round. Uh, it's not triangular, um, which is just, you know, this, it's really a nitpick because Funko always has to do with the big, you know, round eyes. Um, but what's really cool is the wings here. If you flip around to the side here, you can basically see how accurate the, the, the sticker placement is to the actual, um, the, the actual, uh, like little, like, control panel bits and everything like that on the wings there um i really wish that they actually add some you know like metallic shine to it like with the boosters and the wings here just to give it a little bit more toy uh, toy accuracy i'm guessing and just you know a little bit more metallic on the actual decepticon logo there which is also really really nice it's not a sticker like this guy here um which is really cool so uh, and then also flip it around to, to the underside here. It's kind of hard with he's got a stand sticking in, like, penetrated his chest area there. Um, but it's really cool that how accurate the actual bottom is, too. I mean, you got the yellow and everything. And it's really funny how they put the Funko, you know, the, the little, like, copyright stuff underneath where the actual, like, the tape... Um, would you can see the tape and, like, the little numbers and everything, which is really, really funny. Um, and then you can also see the um, the actual round bits there um which these are just like basically screws on the actual figure but they actually decide to make them like where the tape wraps around so you can actually play it um the boosters are also very toy accurate from how the legs kind of concave onto the uh jet boosters there as well they're a little bit more compact than the actual toy there uh but it's it's whatever it doesn't really bother me all that much and he's got his little stubby little legs there uh, and you can also see, like, the pistons on the actual legs itself there. Really, really cool. Really like that. Um, and just the, the only thing that I would wish is that the, the inside the wings and the boosters were just, and the sticker, um, the Decepticon logo anyway, to, um, have, like, a metallic shine. Because that's really, like, what the G1 Transformer figures are. They have, like, these really shiny metallic, uh, stickers and accessories and stuff like that. So it's really cool. Um, and obviously he just has, he has no articulation. He can't look up or down or anything. He's just a static figure. Um, and you can clearly see that he's on a stand there and he's on a very, like, he's on a tilting angle. Like he's about to like nosedive or something like that. So he's not just stuck on a stand being impaled. He's actually kind of like tilting slightly to the right there, which is really, really cool. Um, and you don't really have to point the stand forward like that, but you can, so you can get like really, really weird kind of uh, flying poses there with just moving the stand around, which is really, really cool. Um, I wish that the stand would have come off because I would have loved this guy just to be a static figure just on my shelf instead of just having, you know, a stand. But I I'm glad that they did include a stand for him to actually fly, but I wish it was just like, you can just detach the stand so you can just have him static and you can have him flying whatever you want. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really nice figure. I really like this Funko Pop. I'm so happy that Funko decided to give Laserbeak his own uh, figure in the Transformers line, which is amazing. I really, really do like this figure. Um, and I, I'm going to get around to the Transformers 1 review. Um, I'm just going to do... Uh, I decided to do this review because it's another Transformers thing that I wanted to do. And so I'm hyping you guys up for the actual when the, mo uh, when the movie review actually comes out. So stay tuned for that. Other than that, that's going to do it for me, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. I don't care what you do because we're going to time this. So, bye, guys.